and I'm here at the Columbia Police Department right now. And I'm just going to give you a look at what's kind of happening behind me here. I was actually here in downtown Columbia around four this afternoon and no, people were not wearing coats. And now, as you can tell, I'm up nice and bundled up. I literally just got here in the past 10 minutes and came down to see this. It really all boils down to the budget. And while Public Works told me they are prepared to treat the roads here in Jefferson City, that older equipment may just cause some delays. Having an emergency kit with blankets, gloves, flashlights, food, and other essentials if you get stuck can help hold you over until emergency crews can get you some help. Each one of these 30 applications that I got my hands on through a sunshine request from the city explain to the county why those federal dollars will help the city continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. This is just like Groundhog's Day for them, he said. It's another multi-day system that we've seen several of this winter already. They had guns already pointed at this guy and they were telling him to drop it. Then he pulls his arm back towards his body and then readjusts whatever he had in his hand and then starts running towards the cops. And that's, that's when they fired at him. Addison was about to go shopping when she captured this video on Sunday, which is now in the hands of the Missouri State Highway Patrol. John Hotz with the patrol says video from any source can be crucial to an investigation, but more has to be considered. While that's helping us figure out what happens in general, doesn't necessarily give you the perspective of what the individual officers were seeing at the time that the force was used. Once it's finished, the patrol's investigation will go to the prosecutor, who will then decide whether or not officers broke any laws. In this day and age, the video is vital. Former prosecutor Bill Tackett said video can help prove if officers were acting in self-defense or defense of others. Live testimony is really a place you can size up whether somebody's lying or not. You miss that with a video, but it is the second best evidence that you have other than seeing it with your own eyes. Columbia defense attorney Dan Veet said any video is critical, but since this video is so short and from a distance, he said body cam footage could add a lot of context. Video from the actual officers involved in the shooting would surely be of more value, would surely be more uh, explicit, more accessible. Too much to grasp. You all right over there? I'm completely exhausted. I, ha I haven't slept in 29 hours now. Exhaustion, devastation, and relief for Debbie Lawrence and Lolita Ponder. Went in and woke her up and, of course, being the true Missourian, she said, oh, it's just a flash flood warning. Fortunately, she convinced her to get down to the basement. This, this is the bed where she would have been in. Yeah. She took me around and showed me their property. Hey, but you can see my my tables from the patio are up over there. And of course, you can see the huge tree that broke over here. After the storm, she described it as something out of a movie. Everybody's just walking around not knowing what to do and just crying. They've lost everything. That's exactly what Case, wrote. Case Avenue was like last night. This afternoon was a reunion. Two neighbors reminisce about saving a woman's life. So the neighbor and I ran down there. I busted it in her door and we pulled her out to safety. I hear somebody yelling for help. I'm capable of helping. I'm going to go do it. You know, I don't, I, I don't even know the woman. Never met her before. We've only lived here for a month. But she needed help and we went and helped her. You're a hero in this situation. <laughs> I'm not a hero. I just got somebody out from a dangerous situation. I just, anybody would do it, wouldn't they? Oh. Well, that's not far. <laughs> for now, they're staying with some family while they pick up the pieces. Long term, I, I don't know. It's just going to play it day by day. It's all we can do right now. I'm not doing, don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Just roll over, roll over, roll over.
Right before this, you can hear officers point out Ohana Shea by her yellow shoes. Police say multiple commands were given to get out of the road before the eight people were arrested for unlawful assembly and resisting or interfering with an arrest. As long as the participants were on the sidewalk, we were very happy to allow them to exercise their rights. You can see arrest happening from the sidewalk in this video. Protesters told me they were complying with police commands, but did lie in the street towards the end of the protest. And we told them that it would only be two minutes. Officers uh, just really attacked and charged people that were laying in the street. We got up and immediately went to the sidewalk. If in fact the participants had have listened to the commanders, the officers that were on scene, this would not have resulted in anyone being arrested. You're not finna touch me! One Jefferson City local who was arrested told me they were walking back from laying down when a line of cops shoved her into a car. I was like, you're hurting me, you're hurting me, like that really hurts, you don't have to grab me so hard, and they were like, stop resisting. So I was like, I'm not resisting. We understand that they have a right to protest, they have a message that they want to put out, but we also have a responsibility to the citizens. It really just reunites that fire and it also shows the world why we are out here. One application shows the city racked up almost $61,000 in COVID-19 expenses from March 1st through August 5th. And the city plans to put in another application to cover more recent expenses. On top of that, the city is also asking for about $1.4 million for various departments. That covers a variety of requests. The mayor believes all are CARES Act eligible. The city has to function so that everything else can within the city. The requests range from protective equipment for first responders, making city buildings safe for staff and the public and technology to help staff work remote. The biggest request comes from the Jefferson City Fire Department, wanting about $590,000. Have to be able to provide that service, which is why the CARES funding is so uh, critically important. But the Cole County Commission still has to approve all of those requests. And right now they have only set aside $1 million out of the nearly $9 million for all cities and communities in Cole County. We want to help as many entities as we can. The whole idea is of this care money is that you're helping the people of Cole County as best we can. Presiding Commissioner Sam Bushman said he's not sure right now if all of those requests will qualify, but a private accounting agency is looking over each request. Even if something is turned down at this time, they can always reapply later. Uh, Just speechless almost. I'm very upset trying to keep my composure with it, but you know, I want to see justification be done with this. John Garrison took me up his property to show me just how much of this plastic foam there is. I hold you. Oh, Oh, (laughs) thanks. DNR has received three complaints so far. I mean, you know, it just goes on and on. And told me it's currently investigating the company Kofer Enterprises. They're working with the company to make sure they are following environmental regulations. We will work with them as much as possible because the ultimate goal is to clean up the environment and make sure that there's safety to the public and to our natural resources. You know, I mean, it just goes on and on. In the meantime, Garrison moves some of his livestock, but continues to find dead fish and worries about other animals in the area. Okay, who, who, would, who wouldn't that make mad? What would you do if you had this on your property? What would you do? DNR said it's hard to say what penalties could be in place for the company as multiple programs are involved in the investigation and all have their own repercussions. Now, Garrison is left waiting. I mean, this has to be something done with this. And it it seems like, you know, I mean, they obviously don't care or they would be down here to try to offer to clean up or try to do something. and, And that's not the case. We knew that the challenge for us was going to be that we were going to have to come up with a way of doing a hard copy or packets. Um, something like that to continue the education. Mary's County R1 school district has about 460 students. 30% of those students don't have access to internet at home and nearly half don't have access to the necessary technology. So packets and hard copies were the only option for remote learning. The superintendent said a lot of families simply can't afford access as a large portion of their population qualifies for free and reduced lunches. And in their rural area, broadband is still limited. I think it has a Open the eyes to not only our community, but also people in government on what is needed, not only in larger cities, but also in the rural community to actually meet the needs of the kids out in the country here. Governor Parson said Friday broadband access has been a priority of his administration. Unfortunately, because of this virus has shown how vulnerable we are 
and broadband across this state and just trying to do the simple things to educate our kids. And state education leaders agree, saying this highlights the inequality of education between urban and rural learning. We need to address this issue because uh, even when this crisis passes, uh, I think we're going to see uh, more and more use of virtual education. And, uh, and this, but this equity issue is a major challenge.